All right, welcome back, I guess. <laughs> um, so my second video for this evening, I have been tagged by Who Dat Comics and Movies, the guy who inspired me to start making videos um, because I'm still real. So <laughs> um, Who Dat Comics and Movies put out a video yesterday. Um, he just kind of wanted to, to people to tell them what five books that would never be sold away or always in personal collections. Um, so it was hard picking five books. I probably have like 500 books <laughs> because I really don't sell too many at this point in time. And I've just re recently started collecting, you know, bronze and silver age stuff. So I don't really have a lot of like those big time classic keys and all that type of stuff to show. Um, so most of these books I've picked are, you know, just... I, they have a story behind why I have the book, or it was cool to finally get to meet the author or the artist of the book for the first time. Um, so I don't really, like I said, I've probably shown most of my other keys I've acquired recently, and my videos are on my Snups page. So I decided to do this a little bit different. Um, so I'll just go ahead and dive into it. My first book I have selected, um, this one might be kind of a curveball on this type of list, but... To me, it's is one of the first books I picked up when I started collecting. And again, just like uh, in my previous video, I talked about Fantastic Four 500, about how that kind of inspired me to keep collecting and restart my collection when I was in college and that type of stuff. Um, and then I was in, I think like Evansville, Indiana, and I roll across another comic shop uh, that I've only been into that one time. And I heard about this book. Uh, it's Hulk the End. So around that time, I think this came out in 2002. I probably didn't even get it till 2003. I kept hearing about how Marvel was coming out with this line of the end books. And I don't know, that type of stuff was always kind of intrigued me. It's just, you know, finality to one of your favorite characters. Because um, usually, you know, in the comic book medium, obviously, things just keep going and going and going. So it's, it's kind of curious when books come out like this. So at least like certain authors and artists can kind of come up with an ending to their character perhaps. Um, so what Marvel tried to do with the end line is they tried to at least get like two creators synonymous with the respective book. So like X-Men, I think X-Men the End had like a trilogy written by Chris Claremont. Um, I think the Thanos storyline had Jim Starlin at the creative helm. And in this one had Peter David and Del Keown. So uh, Peter David had an excellent Hulk run of course. So they were selected to do this book. Uh, so basically, I, out of all the ones I've read of these, this is the most insane. And a lot of the other ones go on for multiple issues. This one, they only needed one prestige format book. So as you can tell, it's a little bit chunky right there. Um, so this book basically takes place in the distant future of the Marvel Universe. Uh, everyone has been wiped out by war and famine and all that type of stuff. And alien bugs and watchers that are robots watching the earth and seeing what's going on and the only thing left on this earth in this book is the hulk slash bruce banner um at this point i don't know if you guys have ever seen that episode of doctor who where the master ages them to look kind of like yoda well bruce banner looks like that in this book basically or something similar to that like he is just a shriveled old man who can barely get around the only thing keeping him alive forcibly is the Hulk. Bruce Banner is ready to move on like the rest of humanity, but unfortunately the Hulk is not having any of that. You know, Hulk smash, Hulk's the best, Hulk this, Hulk that. Um, so Hulk will not give up Bruce Banner, basically, even though he wants to. Um, so, I mean, if you guys haven't read this, see if you can check it out. I mean, this book is a little bit harder to come by. Um, I think it's in trying to think of what hardcover it's collected. I don't even know if it's on uh, Marvel Unlimited. I think I looked it up once. Um, I think it's only been reprinted one time as a part of another hardcover that I think had to do with the Future and Perfect hardcover volume. Um, so if you guys roll across this, I recommend it. Uh, I don't really want to spoil too much about the ending. It's a little bit, obviously, in a book like this, it's going to be a bleak ending, but um, it, it's very interesting. So I highly recommend checking it out. I got my book signed by Peter David right there. I think... You know, growing up, wanting to meet comic creators, Peter David was on the top of my bucket list of creators to meet. So when I heard he was going to a convention near me, I definitely had to get this book right here signed by him. It's one of my favorite works he's ever done. And that includes space cases. <laughs> uh, next up, 
Uh, this book was actually a Christmas gift for my brother. He gave me actually like 12 copper, or I'm sorry, Bronze Age X-Men's, which I don't know why he gave these to me. I mean, it it was probably the most generous thing he's ever gave me. <laughs> I've got to admit. Um, but I think this is my favorite cover from that whole run. It's Uncanny X-Men 142. It's that Chris Claremont run. Uh, the Days of Future Past storyline. I'd say this cover for me is a tie with, well, it's on my wall above me. You can't see it. It's kind of like right in front of me. Uh, the one with all the wanted and apprehended posters of Wolverine and Catherine Pride uh, standing in front of it. Uh, I like this cover just as much. Um, I didn't feel like taking the other one down. I'll be completely honest. And this one was just in one of my short boxes, so I grabbed it. Um, got this one signed by Chris Claremont. I think this is actually the very first comic I had ever got signed. It was at... Uh, I think I visited my brother in Houston, Texas. So we went to Wizard World. I think it was in Austin, technically. So we had to drive to Austin, Texas uh, in 2003. And Chris Claremont was there. So, of course, I'm like, well, we definitely have to go meet Chris Claremont because, you know, these books are awesome. And everything X-Men he has done is just excellent. So definitely had to get this signed. So I was very excited to do that. And, uh, yeah, I was very happy to get this run. So, book's a little bit beat up. I mean, obviously, it's, you know, from the late 70s, early 80s era. So, even though it's beat up, I will still treasure this book. And unless I get some sort of upgrade, even then, I probably will hang on to this just because it's memories of one of the very first signings I ever went to. My brother gave it to me. So, that was my second one. Uh, my third one, I kind of tried to pick, I think, what the best variant cover in my collection is because everyone loves variant covers nowadays. Um, so I picked Uncanny X-Force, the J. Scott Campbell. I don't know if this was a 1 in 10 maybe, um, something like that, but I don't see too many of these online. I usually see the one I think right here usually has, there's like a Midtown edition of it how Midtown has their exclusives that usually run for like 10 or 15 bucks on their website and in store. Um, Marvel did this one separately of the Midtown run. So this one's, I mean, even though it's, they recycled the cover on the Midtown one, this was that, I think the one in 10 version of it. So, and I got this signed by Rick Remender in 2012 as well. So, uh, the reason, the other reason I wanted to shout this out, obviously J. Scott Campbell, excellent cover. One of my favorite cover artists of all time for sure. Uh, but this run of Uncanny X-Force and the run prior to that that Craig Kyle and Chris Yost did, uh, by far my favorite run of X-Force books. So, I mean, if once again, I keep saying it, but if you guys haven't checked it out, check it out. Um, it's in, I think they just did a hardcover, like bigger versions of it for the Remender run. And I know before that, the Kyle and Yost run had, a, I think, two or three bigger volumes. Uh, that's the one. But before this, that was the one with Wolverine and X-23 uh, on the same team together. I think this one... I think Deadpool was at the end of the last one when they did... Sorry, I'm looking at my hardcovers. I think they did the Messiah War storyline as the part of the previous one. That's kind of where they started to add Deadpool. Uh, so this one... I think this is the most complete team, though. It has, you know, Phantom X, which is awesome. Wolverine, Psylocke, Deadpool... An Archangel. So, I mean, this is one of the best X-Men, X-Force teams ever put together, in my opinion. Um, so, like I said, I think this one goes for a pretty penny. I don't even, I didn't look it up before this video, but I know, I think I paid like six bucks for it at my local comic shop when it came out. So I was very happy to have this. And actually, I didn't realize until I was doing this video that I have, J. Scott Campbell has not signed this for me. So I guess if he ever comes into the Midwest again, I'll try to get this signed by him. Check out. I got like Street Fighter issue two signed by him. I have no idea why I didn't get this. But anyway, on to my fourth book. Um, so I was lucky enough, at least at one convention, to bump into Robert Kirkman. Uh, so I think it was maybe the last good Wizard World, maybe 2009 or 2010 in Chicago. Um... He wasn't even really advertised to be there. I think he just had a panel dedicated to him, so I couldn't really tell, based on the program at the time, whether he was actually supposed to be there or if it was just a panel about Robert Kirkman stuff because I've seen panels before where they say, like, oh, this is dedicated to so-and-so creator, even though he's not even in the same state. Um, so I'm like, yeah, I like Invincible. I like Walking Dead. And this is... I got to preface that. It's, it, this is before The Walking Dead was anything like it is now, you know, like the big biggest TV show on cable and all that stuff. Um, 
but he was still a pretty big deal. I mean, the the little place that Wizard actually held it in was packed. Um, luckily, actually, Robert Kirkman was there. Like he's like I said, he wasn't even advertised as like a featured guest for the show or anything like that. It was just like a tiny little advertisement about yay big in their programming that said Robert Kirkman panel this time on this day. I'm like, well, cool. That sounds like a fun place to set. And he was actually there um, along with all the other image creators that were at the show. Um, so I wasn't expecting to really get anything signed by him because obviously if he's not scheduled to be there, he doesn't have any signing scheduled or anything like that. Um, so I go to his panel he makes the whole crowd laugh, which, by the way, if you haven't been to one of his panels, I don't know if it's changed since he's gone all Hollywood, I guess. I don't know how that all works. Um, but at least the panel and talk I went to, he was one of the most entertaining panels I've ever been to. He was absolutely hilarious. A lot of great stories from him. Uh, but anyway, uh, the way to get a book signed by him at that time, because he didn't have anything at all scheduled, is basically like on his way out, you basically had to like go up to him directly. And this was his advice. It wasn't just like, fanboys and people and idiots like me running up to him shoving a book in his face he actually like recommended that since he was getting kicked out since his hour was up he's like find me in the hallway if you want me to sign a book so you can imagine the flood of people <laughs> with markers and books out who tried to swarm him to get signatures um so i'm like i don't really like doing that i, I really wanted to get a book signed by him uh, but you know, it's just kind of one of the situations you, you know, you got to pick your battles and that was just one. I'm like, yeah, I'm not even gonna try it. Um, so instead my brother went to an image founder signing. Um, the only image founders that weren't at that signing were Jim Lee and probably Sylvester. I don't think was at that one. The other five were in attendance. So I'm like, well, that sounds awesome. I'll, I'll go to that and, uh, get some books signed by those guys. Um, so I get in line with my brother, and then who sits down with the image founders at the very end without being advertised? Robert Kirkman. Um, so I'm like, well, this is awesome. I put away, I actually put away all of my books for the image founders and start getting my Kirkman books back out because I was that big of a fan at the time. Um, so I just bypass all those guys and go right for Kirkman because he just sits down by himself. He's just sitting there like, do, 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 do. Oh, hey guys, how's it going? Um, so, and also at the time I'm wearing, like, I think I wore it on one of my previous videos. I have this shirt I wear at every convention. It's a zombie Spider-Man playing poker. I, yeah, I don't, I've never even seen another one of those shirts. It's just, you know, I always get compliments on where I took a convention. So I just start wearing it at every convention. Uh, and then of course, Kirkman was a big Marvel Zombies guy at the time as well. I think it was, he was wrapping up Marvel Zombies 2, um, and I wasn't even thinking about the shirt I was wearing. So I go up to him and give him my books. I'm like, oh, hey, how's it going, Mr. Kirkman? I, I really love, you know, I was just fanboying out basically because still to this day, he's one of my favorite writers. And um, so he's he, he didn't even like say anything. He just was like, where'd you get that shirt? I'm like, oh, it was a gift. I, I really don't know. He's just like, is that a bootleg? Is that like, and I actually, he, he made me bend over and show him like the, the Marvel tag that was on the back of my neck. Like that, that it was an official piece of Marvel merchandise because he had never seen this shirt before either. Um, and he actually took a pic, he, he took a cell phone out and took a picture of my shirt and sent it to Sean Phillips because he wasn't sure if he did the art and he just sent a picture of him. He's like, hey, did you do this? I, I didn't stick around. I didn't get a chance to stick around long enough to get the answer. But I thought that was so cool that he actually took the time and, you know, was quipping about my shirt and sending a picture of me and my shirt to other comic book artists. It was just nuts. Uh, so anyway, one of the other books I got signed, going back to the whole uh, five books here, um, I had a Walking Dead 33, which this is that issue where Michonne and the governor go to battle, basically, where Michonne just wrecks the governor big time. Uh, this is pretty much the first Walking Dead issue I ever bought. I wish I could say I was on the book three years earlier. Unfortunately, I was not there for issue one. I really wasn't collecting a lot of uh, independent stuff then, like I was when I was picking up this book. I just heard about it through Wizard Magazine, specifically this issue here. So... Once I read this, I was hooked for a hundred issues. Uh, so like I said, I wish I was on board before this, but this is the first one I picked up. Unfortunately, it's not that second print blue cover, which don't get me started on that because first print's always greater than second print's in my opinion. So 
when I have the choice to pick up the first print, now which one's more valuable, the second print, but who cares about value? I'm here for this book in particular. The first print of issue 33, signed by Robert Kirkman. So once again, this one probably will never be going anywhere just because of that fun, hilarious story I had getting this book signed. It always makes me laugh every time I think about it. Uh, so the last book I have, um, I was lucky enough I don't know if it was the same convention or not. It was pretty dang close. If it wasn't the, that specific convention, it was probably like one before or after. I'm trying to think of the date. It might have been 2007, maybe. Um, anyway, I was lucky enough to actually finally meet Michael Turner, uh, one of the absolute greatest artists of all time, in my opinion. Definitely like one of the top cover artists. I mean, I'll just go ahead and show the book. Uh, this is Soulfire number one. This was a Wizard World Chicago limited edition. Uh, it's the Virgin variant, limited to 1500. Uh, I bought this. Uh, they used to have the Aspen booths at every Wizard World back when Wizard actually went more toward comics instead of celebrity. And Aspen had, you know, well, Mike Turner. And because of Mike Turner's contributions to everything and just the caliber of his art, like Aspen was a big thing. So. They, meeting Mike Turner at the Aspen booth at the Wizard Conventions, the line got bigger every year. So I bought this. I was kind of hoping that year, like, yeah, I'll get it signed by, you know, Mr. Turner and all that good stuff. And yeah, it was pretty much impossible the year I bought this. So the next year I went back, I think, unfortunately, it was, I think, the final year he was alive. And, you know, obviously we didn't know that at the time. So, you know, I was like, I, I got to meet Mr. Turner this year. So um, I had you know, five books I want to get signed by. And this was one of them just because, I mean, I limited to 1500 They're going to charge for it. So because I paid a few extra bucks for this book, I was like, I got to get signed by him this year. Um, so I finally, I probably waited the hour and change. Finally got to meet Mike Turner. Um, he, he was one of the sweetest, nicest people I've ever interacted with at a comic book convention. I can't say enough words about him. Um, just the, when he passed the amount of, you know, emotion, because I think it was Wizard World 2008 that August. They had Aspen, everybody, all of his friends were there when he passed away. And I mean, you could fill it in the whole convention center when he passed. Um, so, like I said, he was lucky enough to be there a year before and for me to actually get to talk to him before all that happened. And like I said, I, I can't say enough good things about Michael Turner. Um, his art is awesome, he was even more awesome. Um, but I was lucky enough to get his signature and then Peter Steigerwald also signed this. But when I was getting to sign by him, I kind of joked. I'm like, yeah, it, it took me a year and an hour waiting in line to get this signed by you. And he just laughed. He's like, I, and actually he didn't laugh. I'm sorry. He, he, I felt like he legitimately felt bad. He was apologizing for making me wait. I'm just like, you don't have to apologize at all. You've earned all of this. So he, he was extremely humble and very, like I said, I've, a good chunk of my collections is signed by, you know, the creators who did them. And I've met a lot of creators at this point, but in terms of like class acts and awesome people and just, you know, Mike Turner was top of that list. Like he, he was just amazing. Um, so I can't say enough good words about him. And I think all of you guys have heard from everybody else, how great he is and was, I should say. Um, so once again, soul fire, number one, like I said, just because of that story, I would definitely never try to flip this and capitalize on, you know, his death or anything like that. So this will be staying in my collection for a very long time. And then I guess technically honorary mention slash book number six, since technically not a comic book, my sketchbook, which I showed, I guess, technically two videos ago now, uh, that thing might go in the coffin with me. <laughs> Um, I would obviously would never sell anything at all with sketchbook, give it to anybody else. Uh, that's my baby. That goes to every single convention I go to with me, anything like that. Um, just to get, you know, author signatures, artist sketches, anything I can get any, I mean, I'm lucky to be able to get what I've got in there. So that thing will probably be six feet under with me when the time comes. <laughs> so uh, I had to shout that one out. All right. So since I'm, Wow, I'm sorry, 19 minutes, 25 seconds. Ew, I, I apologize for being that long. Um, so I guess the last part of my video, I got to shout out some people. Um, so first off, I'm going to shout out Rebel Comics. Uh, he was talking about in Rebel Cat last night, how he wanted to do one of these. So I don't know if he's going to do one or wants to be shouted out. So I will shout him out. Um, so Rebel Comics, you are shouted out to do one of these. Uh, if you guys haven't checked it out, Rebel Cat... 
four episodes in and absolutely awesome. One of my favorite live streams every week, even though live streams are every day, which thumbs up guys, you're all doing an excellent job. I'm not saying there's too many, but you guys are machines. Good job on all the live streams. I, yeah, I've watched more live streams and comic book content on YouTube than by far than anything on television in the last three or four weeks. Um, my second, Silver Age Dave. Uh, if you guys haven't watched his stuff, oh my god, he has like one of the best comic room slash man caves I have ever seen. And he always has this like cool perspective on his videos where instead of showing him in the books, he'll like walk around his room and kind of show you his shelves and that stuff. It's almost like a virtual tour every time you watch one of his videos. Um, so I kind of wanted, I don't know if I'll even watch this. I don't know if he subscribed to me, but I figured I'd try to, you know, tag him. So, because I don't know if you guys have ever seen um, Indiana Jones in the Last Crusade. I, I imagine him picking five books out of his room as like Indy and the other guy trying to pick out the Holy Grail amongst all these Holy Grails. Um, except I think in Dave's case, any choice would be choosing wisely so he wouldn't turn into a dust skeleton. <laughs> so, um, Silver Age Dave. And why not? I'll shout out the other two people I shout out earlier. Um, Sam I Am Comics, you're tagged. Jennifer Courtney, you're tagged. Um, I don't know how many more of these I'm supposed to do, but since I'm almost 22 minutes in now, I'll go ahead and call it quits on this video. Uh, so, you know, lastly, once again, thanks a lot, Hudak Comics and Movies. Uh, Russell, I mean, I, I probably wouldn't be doing these videos if it wasn't for you kind of pushing back and saying, like, hey, you've been buying all this stuff. Still real. <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I definitely appreciate everything all of you guys do for, you know, the community in terms of like auctions and that stuff. You guys have hooked me up with so many good deals. Um, so thank you guys for everything. Thank you for watching. Subscribe, thumbs up, th I, thumbs down. I don't care. I mean, this video's gone way too long anyway. So like I said in the last few videos, leave a thumb, I guess. Um, subscribe. Thanks for watching.